Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's April the 18th and we're looking at 2 Samuel chapter 9. In this famous passage we have the relationship between David and Mephibosheth. David said, Is there left anyone of the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was in the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. The king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said, Jonathan has yet a son, who is lame in his feet. The king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, and Lodibar. Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, and from Lodibar. And when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth? And he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said, Fear not. I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake and will restore to thee all the land that saw thy father that thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldst look upon such a dead dog as I am? And that's my password for today. A rather strange expression. But he is completely astounded at the grace that David offers to him. He says of himself, he says, What am I, thy servant, that you should look upon such a dead dog as I am? And the king called Zibna, um, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertaineth to Saul and to all his house. Now therefore... Now therefore, and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and you will bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat, and Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king has commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, He shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Milcah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet. <clears throat> now, I, I, I completely love this concept that this young man is taken from obscurity in his father's house, from Saul's house, and he is elevated by David into the position of a prince of Israel. And why does David do it? He doesn't do it for Mephibosheth's sake. He doesn't do it because Mephibosheth is crippled in his feet. He does it in honour to the friendship that he had with Jonathan. And because David loved Jonathan, he decided that he would bless all of Jonathan's children. And Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth becomes the object of David's grace. Now in the next chapter we have um, sort of the next thing that happens in the course of the life of David. In chapter 10 it says it came to pass that after the children of Ammon died, Hanun his son reigned in his stead. Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanun the son of Nehash, as his father showed kindness unto me. And so David sent to comfort him by the hands of his servants for his father. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. And the princes of the children of Ammon said to Hanan their lord, Thinkest thou that David shall honour thy father, 
that he has sent comforters unto thee? Hath not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search out the city, to spy it out, to overthrow it? So Hanan took David's servant and shaved off one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle so that their buttocks were exposed and sent them away. When this was told unto David, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho till your beards are grown and then return. And the children of Ammon saw that they stank before David. And the children of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of beth Rohab, and the Syrians of Zobah, 20,000 footmen, infantry, and of King Macha, a thousand men, and of Ishtof, 12,000 men. And David heard it, he sent Joab and all the host of the mighty men. And the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array at the entering of the gate in the field. And the Syrians of Zobah and Roath and Ishtob and Makkah, and they were themselves in the field. <coughs> when Joab jo saw the battle, uh, the front of the battle was against him as bef because they had surrounded him. He chose all the choicest men of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he delivered into the hands of Abishai, his brother, and he put them in array against the children of Ammon. And he said, if the Syrians are too strong for me, then come and help me. And if the children of Ammon are too strong for thee, then I will come and help you. Um, but be of good courage. Let us play the men for our people. For the cities of our God, the Lord do that which seemeth him good. <clears throat> you know, I really like that phrase, and that could easily be my password for today, verse 12. Be of good courage, and let us play the men for our people, and for the cities of our God, and the Lord do that which seemeth him good. And Joab drew nigh, and the people that were with him, <clears throat> unto the battle against the Syrians and they fled before him and when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fled they also fled before Abishai and entered into the city and Joab returned from the children of Ammon and came to Jerusalem and when the Syrians saw that they were smitten before Israel um, that they went beyond the river and they came to Halam and Shabash the captain of the host of Hazra went before them and when it was told David, he gathered all Israel together and passed over Jordan and came to Helam. And the Syrians set themselves in array against David and fought with him. And the Syrians fled before Israel and David slew the men, 700 chariots of the citizens and 40,000 horsemen and smote Shobach, the captain of the host, who died there. And they eventually made peace with Israel and they served them. And the Syrians feared to help the children of Ammon anymore. Not only did David's men conquer these invading armies, but they refused to come and support each other in future battles. So there's my password for today. That little phrase, be of good courage. Let us play the men for our people and for the cities of our God, and the Lord do that which seemeth him good. Well, God bless you. Great to speak to you, and look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Bye for now.